A flag outside a Jewish fraternity was vandalized over the weekend. We talked with members on how it affects them. Plus, not to me your DoorDash driver could cost you your meal. We explain why. And a new gymnastics club just opened on campus. We'll tell you how you can join. Live from the studio in Stauffer Flint at the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Welcome back to KUJH. I'm Claire Decatur. And I'm Aiden Pezzle. We start today with team coverage of the investigation of two separate vandalism incidents around the Lawrence area. Dylan Vanderveen is live outside the Alpha Epsilon Pi, where one of the incidents occurred. And later, Abby Lord will tell us more about the bus shelter vandalism. A KU fraternity was the victim of a hate crime over the weekend. The Alpha Epsilon Pi fraternity is a major Jewish fraternity that has an Israeli flag flowing alongside an American flag to support Israel. The flag was taken down from the flagpole and vandalized by an unknown individual. KUJH reporter Dylan Vanderveen is live at the AE Pi fraternity to tell us more. Dylan? Yeah, thanks guys. The Alpha Epsilon Pi or AE Pi fraternity here was hanging up the Israel flag Sunday night just like they do every night for the last month in support of Israel. However, around 10 o'clock, Lawrence Police Department got a phone call from one of the AAPI fraternity members on a report of vandalism. That's when they said Lawrence Police Department found the flag about a block away, ripped and torn to pieces. Lawrence Police Department is concerned about this crime and the, or they are concerned about this crime and they are very much taking this seriously. But despite all the hatred towards AAPI, they are just focused strictly on their brotherhood. Even during times like this, when horrific things happen to our house, it's important to stay closer together um, and just bond over things that we normally wouldn't. Even through our darkest times, we're able to be resilient and come out on top and just focus on the good in the world and not be hateful towards others, even though that might be an oppression towards us. As you can see, the flag has been replaced behind me. However, that goes along with the college campuses who are unrested, especially at Ivy League material. Harvard and Penn both had anti-Semitic email threats that are pushed ongoing FBI investigations. Tulane had an assault that was resulted in multiple kids being assaulted on pro-Palestine and pro-Israel sides. But here at KU, KU Police Department and Lawrence Police Department have both said the investigation is still ongoing and we will let you know with more, you, with more news when we have it. Back to you guys here in the studio. This is one of the many anti-Semitic incidents on KU's campus this past month. A bus shelter featuring indigenous art was vandalized in North Lawrence. Abby Lord is at Locust and North 3rd Street. Abby, what can you tell us? Thanks guys. Iris Cliffs, the white buffalo, was vandalized allegedly on Friday night. You can see that there is no more glass on this bus shelter, but when it was vandalized, there were holes here and here. Glass along the floor, caution tape lining the entire bus shelter, but the good news is the bus stop still works for those who need it. Felice Leverly for Transit Planner 2 said that the Lawrence Transit is in the process of replacing the glass and will replace the art. The glass vendor needs to be ordered for this site and will cause a few days of delay. The installation delays may occur if it gets too cold for the adhesive to stick properly. The Lawrence Police Department says this is related to three other smashes that happened that night, including 12 windows, a car window, and equipment glass. An eyewitness saw two men with an alleged bat or hammer after hearing glass breaking. Reporting from North and Locust for KUJH News, I'm Abby Lord. Back to you guys. Thanks, Abby. When the 12 windows were smashed from the nine vehicles, nothing was taken. Investigators are reviewing the evidence and searching for the video from the area. We will keep you updated as the investigation continues. Well, the weather recently has been surprisingly warm, Aiden. You're telling me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ashton, is this heat keeping up over the weekend or is it going to start looking like fall? Hello, Lawrence. We are taking a look at our regional temperatures right now. We are hanging on into those mid 50s, 54 here in Lawrence. And for most of the day, we are hanging on to those 50s, not even touching the 60s today. This is a look at the live shot outside. Lots of overcast across Lawrence, hanging on to quite a bit of that cloud coverage. You can see that being reflected here on our radar. The clouds are moving very quickly out of the southwest right now across Lawrence. We are hanging on to that cloud coverage for most of the day for today. Our temperatures are getting into the upper 50s, not even touching the 60s, partly cloudy conditions, and then the winds are shifting to the north about five miles per hour 
for the rest of the day. This is a look at the 24 hour temperature trend for the next day. We are dipping into the 30s for tonight and then making that slow crawl back into the 50s for tomorrow. Lots of overcast for the next couple of days. Yesterday, though, we hit the 70s well above average for this time of year. And then for the next couple of days, though, we are trending more average like temperatures until we jump back into the 60s. But we'll talk about that coming back up. Thanks, Ashton. Glad the weather's looking good for the weekend. KU Student Senate officials warned the full assembly that they are at risk of running out of money in the allocated fund. KUJH's Blake Ullman has more. In back-to-back -back Student Senate Assembly meetings, the President's Cabinet has had to warn senators about their dwindling reserve account. But in the long run, we don't have much money as of right now, and that's because that's because there's still a lot of payments being processed uh, from the carry forward amount from last year. In subsequent meetings since then, senders continued to draw down the unallocated fund and some feared it would fall below $3,000. We were kind of in an unknown space, but now um, we've been told that like we're good. Um, we're still trying to get, we're still trying to get those like official numbers from admin, but like we have been told like we're, we're totally fine. Recent updates show the Student Senate will have enough money to make it through the semester. The unallocated fund, which has been the issue in this case, is used by the Senate to fund student groups and events. While the uncertainty has largely been blamed on accounting errors, student leaders are looking for ways to avoid a similar situation in the future. For KUJH News, I'm Blake Ullman. The Student Senate is back for another full assembly meeting on November 29th. Coming up, we'll give you details on what happens when you don't tip your DoorDash driver. Stay with us. From adversity, we rose. We made history and became pioneers, voyagers, champions, jayhawks. And when our chant rises, haunting and hallowed, Jayhawks are telling the world what's near. Victory. Welcome back to KUJH. DoorDash has come out and warned customers that lower tips amounts may result in a slower delivery of your food. Drivers are able to pick and choose the orders they want to deliver based off the amount of money each tip provides. Most drivers earn their money directly from their tips, but they are not paid by the hour. DoorDash driver and KU student Graham Mitchell told KUJH how he decides on which order he picks up. And I only select the orders that have like the most money yield for me. Like however much the tip is or however big the order is, I'm going to select it based on the, the size of it. So like I won't select like a $4 order, but I will select like a $10 order or above. Unlike Lawrence, many students don't have the finances to always provide a tip to the drivers. So as a student, if you aren't able to tip your driver, be prepared to wait for your order. Food insecurity is a growing problem in U.S. Here at Douglas County, Just Food is a food bank and pantry that serves, on average, over 300 families a day. KUJH's Libby Johnson went to learn how the service operates. Every month, Just Food spends $40,000 on things like milk, meat, cheese, and produce. Every day, two staff members go out to stores like Target and the Merck to get food that is still edible but is past the sell-by date. I talked to Executive Director Andrea Walker to find out more about what they do in the winter months. They can choose a chicken or a turkey and then there's things like mashed potatoes, fresh potatoes, carrots, celery, um, dessert options, cranberry sauce gravy and things like that. One of the core principles here is allowing people to make their own choices on what they want or need. Back to you, Claire. Thanks, Libby. Just Food runs a point system and each family will receive 14 points for their holiday meal. The signups open on Monday. For more information, visit justfoodskansas.org. Ashton Russo is live on campus to give an update on the weather here in Lawrence. Ashton? We are taking a live look outside of campus right now. A lot of overcast, but the sun is still peeking through right now. These clouds are going to be gradually clearing out throughout the night, and you can just see how these trees have now changed into the leaf colors of those red and orange. Very beautiful, and the temperatures have now dropped from yesterday, but we'll talk more about these temperatures coming up in the full forecast ahead. 
Well, glad we're going to have good weather for the game on Saturday. Halloween is behind us, but basketball season is upon us. And for a KU alumni, it is the best of both worlds. KUJH reporter Carson Shea introduces us to Jacob Hood to tell us more about the story. Jacob Hood is a longtime Lawrence resident who attended KU and currently works for the university's athletics department. In his free time every fall, he creates a haunted house attraction in his home with his peers. Hood's story is a heartening one. My name is Jacob Hood. Um, I am just kind of an all-around creative guy. Um, and every October, or as, as many Octobers as we can, uh, my family and friends put together a haunted attraction called McFinnigan Manor. It's both a traditional like haunted house attraction. It's also like, you know, there is a really uh, heavy narrative experience to it as well. And yeah, it's, it's also a free community event that raises money for United Way. Aside from McFinnigan Manor, Hood graduated from KU in 2018 and continues to make his mark at the university. I worked for the Kansan uh, throughout my entire career in college. Um, I, I did editorial cartoons. I did the, uh, the game day posters that they hold up at basketball games. Um, I did some short films. And now what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm working at Rock Chalk Video. So um, anytime you see an animated Jayhawk or really an animated anything, um, that's, that's almost always me. The city of Lawrence and its community has an effect on Hood's work and even McFinnigan Manor itself. Just the Lawrence community, the culture has been a huge part of my life, um, my entire life. And I think it's, you know, the McFinnigan Manor story takes place in this area. And I think it's, yeah, it is kind of a cool crossroads between um, Kansas kind of spooky Midwest harvest culture and, and Halloween. Like it kind of draws uh, back to the original um, kind of harvesty roots of Halloween. Next October, be sure to check out Jacob Hood's McFinnigan Manor. For KUJH, I'm Carson Shea. Although the opportunity to go through the haunted house has passed, it's something to think about for next year. But you don't have to wait a year to watch Kansas basketball. We'll have the latest in sports after the break. Stay with us. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back to KUJH Sports. I'm Brock Niemeyer. We have a ton of things to catch you up on, so let's jump right into it. Starting off with Kansas football. The Jayhawks traveled to Ames to take on the Iowa State Cyclones last week, and after a back-and-forth game, Kansas was able to edge out Iowa State and win by a final score of 28-21. The victory clinches the first winning season for KU football since 2008 and the first under head coach Lance Leipold. Earlier this week, the team jumped five spots in the college football playoff ranking as they are now ranked 16th in the country. This weekend, Kansas will open the college football Saturday slate as they kick off their game with Texas Tech at 11 a.m. at the booth. Carson Shea is outside the stadium with more on the matchup. I'm here at David Booth Kansas Memorial Stadium where the Jayhawks are set to play the Red Raiders this upcoming Saturday. Kansas is coming off a huge win in Ames against Iowa State last weekend. The Jayhawks are ranked number 16 in the college football playoff rankings, which is the highest they've ever been in the CFP era. Texas Tech is 4-5, and five, but they have a high-powered offense, so the Jayhawks can't look at this as an easy win. Kickoff is set for 11 a.m. on Saturday morning with sunny skies and a temperature of 60 degrees. For KUJH, I'm Carson Shea. Thanks, Carson. Now for some sports that are heating up indoors. Both men's and women's basketball have kicked off their seasons this week. The number one ranked team in the country, KU men's basketball, defeated the North Carolina Central Eagles 99-56 at Allen Fieldhouse on Monday. Kansas had five players scoring double figures, led by super senior Kevin McCuller, who led all scorers with 22. Kansas is set to take on the Manhattan Jaspers tomorrow night at 7 p.m. in Allen Fieldhouse. As for the women's side, Kansas opened their season last night taking down the Demons of Northwestern State by a score of 88-46. to It was a record-setting night for the Jayhawks as their 16 three-pointers set a regular season record for the program. Yvette Mayberry scored her 1,000th career point last night and Zakiah Franklin moved into first all-time in minutes played in program history. This game was also the debut of Samaya Nichols, who, the highest-ranked recruit in program history. Reporter Kara Lyons has more on the superstar freshman. Landed at the Fog signified the start of the basketball season, and the women's team got a chance to give the fans a sneak peek of what's to come for this upcoming season throughout their scrimmage. The team heads into the season with confidence as four of their returning players are starters, but there's one specific new addition that helps boost their confidence. Number 12, Samaya Nichols! 
Nichols was on slams and 247's freshman to watch list this season, and head coach Brandon Schneider and teammate Yvette Mayberry believe she fits in well and can add a lot to the team with her skill set. She's a great new addition. Um, she fit right in. With her skill set and versatility, um, you know, she can play a lot of positions for us. The team has been able to welcome her to the Jayhawk family with open arms. Joining them has been great. They're very welcoming. Um, it's like on the court, we're competing, we're trying to get each other better, but then off the court, I mean, it's a loving team. With the help of the veteran lineup and the comfort of the team environment, Nichols will have a better chance of letting the game come to her. Just to know that she already has, you know, four veterans there, I feel like it's helpful for her to be able to just, you know, not try to force force things. The leadership and camaraderie the starting lineup has for Nichols helps bring out the best play in her, which will contribute to the team's chemistry on the court and success in the season. I'm just happy that she's my teammate. And I, I feel like I can speak for my whole team whenever I say that. For Playmakers, I'm Carol Lyons. For high school sports, the Eudora High School Unifying Bowling Team competed at the regional meet Wednesday afternoon. KUJH reporter Jack Denebine has more on the story from Topeka. The Eudora Unified Bowling Team placed seventh at regionals Wednesday with a series total of 573. The top five teams qualify for state and the Cardinals just missed the cut by 67 pins. Even though the team just missed out on state, senior Riley Griffin says she is happy with how the team did. Um, I think we played really well as a team. Um, we did. This was our second best score of the season, so we did. Like we came out and we all had fun, so that's what matters. The team bowled six Baker games, where each of the four bowlers bowled at least two frames. The team scores from each game were 93, 81, 118, 97, 77, and 107. While he is sad to see the season end, head coach Daniel Hoshauer says he is proud of the relationships the team built over the course of the season. Just the way the team bonded, you know, uh, the chemistry we gained, you know, throughout the year. We'd made a few tweaks to the lineup uh, kind of as we went, but I feel like, you know, this team that we had, we brought to regionals today, was probably had the best chemistry and the, the probably had the most fun together. So that was fun to see. Sophomore Jordan Chalasi says she enjoyed spending time with her teammates all season, but her favorite moments came off the lanes, such as... Getting food afterwards. Hoshauer says the team will have a party to celebrate the end of the season, and will look... <laughs> to strike back next year. I'm Jack Denebine, reporting for KUJH News. The last time the Eudora Unified Bowling Team made it to state was in 2021. After the break, we take you inside a local flu shot clinic. Stay right here with us on KUJH News. Welcome back to KUJH. Winter is approaching and that means flu season is just around the corner. Luckily, Watkins Health Service is offering flu clinics throughout the fall semester. Thanks to a generous donation by Healthy Blue Kansas, money is available for free flu shots for students who have insurance coverage. If students receive a flu shot from Watkins or a WHS sponsored flu clinic this fall, they are eligible for a $50 Walmart gift card. So a flu shot is an inactive um, vaccine, so it's basically just producing antibodies in your body to help prevent the flu. I'd say it's important to get the flu shot because it will prevent sickness throughout the year and just being in college, we're surrounded by so many people and so we're just so much more prone to getting sick. 
Students can schedule a flu shot appointment at walk-ins by calling their appointment line at 785-864-9507. As our show comes to a close, we will take a quick look at what weather we can be expecting for the rest of the week. We're taking a more local look at our temperatures right now. We are hanging on into those mid-50s, 54 here in Lawrence, 56 down in Ottawa. And for most of the day, we are hanging on to those 50s, not even touching the 60s for today. By dismissal, we are in those upper 50s, partially cloudy, but these chances of clouds are not bringing any precipitation with it. So we are staying dry for most of the day. And then tonight, we are dipping back into the 30s. 35 is our low this evening. And then our cloud coverage is clearing out throughout the night giving us more clear skies for tomorrow. Sunny conditions, temperatures still in those 50s though. And then we have those light winds out of the northwest for tomorrow. And if you are heading out to the football game on Saturday, perfect football weather. Kickoff's going to be there in the low 50s. And then we are warming back up into the upper 50s by the end of the game. Partially cloudy conditions, but we are staying dry throughout the game. This is a look at the future forecast for us. We are staying dry here in Kansas for the next week. Quite a bit of precipitation to the southeast of us, but we have this warmer front that's going to dip now near Lawrence in the next couple of days. On Saturday, it's going to dip into Lawrence, bumping our temperatures from the 50s into the 60s for the second half of the week. For the next six to 10 days, our temperatures will be trending above average. Average for this time of year in Lawrence is about 59 degrees. We are looking at those upper 60s for the start of next week. This is a look at the extended forecast there. Today in the 50s until Sunday when we jump back into the 60s. So Claire and Aiden, I know I'm looking forward to that nicer sunny weather. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ashton. Well, featuring flips and tricks, the KU Intramural Gymnastics Club meets every Monday night from 745 to 945, and those interested must register through Rock Chalk Central and pay an entry fee of just $25. KUJH reporter Ellie Mueller tells us more. After being founded this past year, the KU Intramural Gymnastics Club has officially sprung into season. Created for past and aspiring gymnasts to reconnect with the sport they love, the club has created a relaxed environment with no competitive expectations. Michaela Schroeder, founder of the club and former gymnast, was passionate about bringing her talent into her sophomore year of college. I did gymnastics pretty much from the age of three to my senior year of high school. Competed all the way seventh grade through my senior year and yeah, gymnastics was just a huge part of my life. Schroeder was inspired to create the club to build a community and allow members to stay active through practicing gymnastics. Practice is pretty open gym style. It basically just consists of mainly retired gymnasts, but also some new gymnasts, also cheerleaders, dancers, working on new skills and skills that we used to be able to do in the past and are coming back into. Through her hard work, Michaela hopes to grow the club across campus. There's definitely been a lot of behind the scenes just with figuring out where to hold practice, how logistics work, and all those sorts of things, and then planning for upcoming fundraisers that we're going to have, and yeah. Whether you are new to the sport or have past experience, anyone is welcome to join the club. This is Ellie Mueller reporting for KUJH. So what do you guys plan on doing for the rest of the weekend? I have to go to work. I know I personally am going to go to both the Kansas basketball game tomorrow and the football game on Saturday. Ooh, very, very excited about enough. that. Yeah. What about you, Claire? I'm doing the same thing as that. I'm excited. <laughs> Rock chalk, hey, baby. It's a sport weekend for KU. Always excited about that, which is fun. Oh, sure. my goodness. Oh, yeah. All right, well, I have a quick hot topic question for you guys, though. So, uh, Halloween just came around. So, do you guys listen to Christmas music before or after Halloween? Um, if it's cold enough, I'll listen to it before. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, I don't know if I do it before Halloween, but I definitely do it before Thanksgiving. I love Mariah. It's Aww. a year-round so, thing, I yeah, think. Yeah. It's, yeah. I listen to it every month. Mar really? Mariah Carey? Really? <laughs> Maybe a little Justin she, Bieber album? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mistletoe? Oh, I love that song. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> uh, well, that's all we have this week for you guys here at KUJH. But come back next Thursday for some more KUJH news. And a reminder to keep up to date with KUJH on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as visiting our website at tv.ku.edu.